This video is going to review how to read an analog electric meter as well as calculate the amount of energy used and how to calculate costs associated with electric usage. On the screen are the two electric meters used by our power company Duquesne Light. Duquesne Light is currently phasing out the analog meter which is on the left with the dials and replacing with the smart meter that you see here on the right hand side. If you have a, an analog meter you're going to have to use a set, series of steps that might be different than those that have a digital meter. That's the purpose of this video. If you take a look at the electric meter, not only do you notice the dials, but there's also a special area on there that says multiply. These digital meters use, or these analog meters use a multiplier between readings in order to calculate the kilowatt hours. This will be further explained in the problems to follow. On the screen are the notes from class explaining how to read an electric meter. The first step is to read all the dials from right to left and write the numbers down from right to left. When the hand on any dials between two numbers, read the smaller number. If the pointer appears to be exactly on a number, record the next lowest number unless the pointer on the dial to its right has passed zero. So let's take a look at the first set of dials. Following our first step, it says read all the dials from left to right and write the numbers down from right to left, right? So uh, here we've got our first dial on the complete left-hand side. I'm going to go from left to right. It's between 1 and 2. It says when the hand on any dial is between two numbers, read the smaller number, right? Now thinking about like a clock face, that is almost at the number two, but it's not quite there yet. So this is going to be one. This is dial moves clockwise. The next dial moves counterclockwise as it goes from zero to one, two, three, all the way around to eight, then in nine. And it's just past nine, just a little bit. And it's between nine and what is zero. You might say, well, that's the lower number, but it's not. That zero is actually 10. So it's between nine and 10, and the lower number is nine. We can confirm that by looking at the next dial. This dial is moving in a clockwise motion, 1, 2, 3, 4, on the way, 9, and almost to 10, but it's not quite there yet. So it, it's almost there. That's why this one's almost passing 9 and about to roll over, but it's not there yet. So that's going to be a 9. And the next dial also goes counterclockwise, like our one on the uh, second to the right there. So let's read this one. It goes 1, 2, 3. It's between 3 and 4, not quite there yet. And you can see that. As soon as this goes past the zero mark, this would become a four, but it's still just a three. So it's 3,991 is our number, right? So when you write them down, right, once you get that down, you know, written down, you're going to read it as a number. You can put a comma there showing that's a 3,000 mark, hundreds, tens, and our single digits. Let's read the next set of dials. Okay, so here again, we seem to have our pointer on the three. Right. This number is between 9 and 10. Didn't move very much. This one here is between 9 and 10. Didn't move very much as well. And then this one hasn't passed 4 yet. So the dials have not changed a whole lot. It's changed by uh, a number of 2 in a single digits. Let's take a look at our next set of numbers. Here I see that we're between the 5 and the 6. Almost on the 6. So it makes us wonder, well, was it a 6 or was it a 5? Look, the next dial, right? And this dial is between the 9 and the 10. Remember, it's not 9 and 0, it's 9 and 10. So uh, this one hasn't passed yet. So this is going to be 9, uh, and then here's going to be the 5. Okay, so we've gone to 91, to 93, to 95. This one here has not passed 0 yet. It's 9 again, and this one here is on a 3. So you can see how our numbers have changed slowly over time. Now, if you're doing this for the activity, you have to do these number readings each individual day. And as you can see, as days go by, the meter has not changed very much. The single digit arrow, the indicator on the dial, moves very, very slowly. And if you sat there and watched the meter, you most likely wouldn't see it spin. So let's say this information was taken over a course of several days. So let's say that this is obviously reading one, reading two, and reading three. Now oftentimes this is confused. Uh, a lot of students 
because they would say that this is three days passing. And that's not necessarily true because our top reading here is our initial reading. And 24 hours hasn't passed since that reading was taken. So this is our initial, our starting point. The next reading would have been taken 24 hours later, which would be our first day. Another 24 hours have passed when we take this reading. So in essence, three days haven't passed, but only two. So let's look at the energy usage. This is the equation we use to determine the amount of energy that's being used by our meters. So let's show you how to do that. Going to our equation here, we take the final reading, which is 3, 9, 9, 5, and we subtract it from our initial, 3, 9, 9, 1. We get 4. Now, there's a caution. In order to get that value, we have to multiply it by the multiplier that's listed on our meter. This is an extra step for those using analog meters. So 4 times our multiplier of 12 will equal our kWh for kilowatt hours used. And 4 times 12 is going to be 48. So our electrometer has indicated that we've used 48 kilowatt hours. The second part of our equation is to divide that by time. According to this, we start our initial, and then we took our first day of reading, and then our second day. So that means two days have passed. So it's 48 kilowatt hours in two days. So we want to know how much is for just one day for our denominator. Right? 48 divided by 2 is going to be 24 kilowatt hours per day. And that would be the amount of electrical energy used over that time period. And it would also be the average amount of energy used per day. So the next part is to think about what is the cost of using this much electricity. So we're going to use the cost equation. The cost of electricity is going to be the amount of energy used times the cost per kilowatt hour known as the rate from the power company. So let's say the rate is 10 cents, which would be 10 cents per kilowatt hour used. Plug that into our equation. Cost will be equal to our energy used was 24 kilowatt hours per day. Always important to write down your units. Multiply it by our 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hours cancels out, giving us the cost per day, which is going to be $2.40 per day. Now you can think about if you were asked what the average cost would be for a week, you can multiply it by seven days, or an average month, multiply it by 30, and you can determine what the cost of electricity would be. Again, these numbers are fictitious. Your actual usage may vary quite differently, especially when you start thinking about what is the rate that you use at home for the power company.